Are you ready to make dad a one-of-a-kind handmade card with your Cricut machine? In this tutorial, I will show you how you can use cardstock and iron on vinyl for a professional handcrafted card result. Plus, I'll show you an optional wobbly spring technique that can add a fun pop of movement to your card designs. You can get instant access to all of these card designs as a premium Abby Kirsten Collections member, plus hundreds of more SVG files, templates, and project designs are waiting for you in the craft vault. So let's cover the supplies that we're gonna need for this project. I am using a Cricut machine here. I'm using the Maker 3, but you could use any of the other full-size machines as well. Um, you could adapt this also to work with the Cricut Joy machine. If you have the Cricut Joy, you would just need to make the card a little bit smaller overall. I am gonna be using 65 to 80 pound cardstock for my card. Um, you're gonna need them in a variety of colors of like blues, grays, orange, and browns for the um, design that we're using here, or just pick the colors that you feel that you want to display in your particular card. Um, you'll need a cutting mat to cut out your uh, cardstock on, and I'm also going to be featuring uh, heat transfer vinyl, also known as iron-on vinyl, for this detail piece that we see here. This is Grill Master. Now, if you don't want to use the heat transfer vinyl, you can make this work with cardstock. Um, but I like using the heat transfer vinyl because it's very easy to just weed and then iron it right onto the paper. Um, and it works really well and you don't have to worry about dealing with like, you know, putting a bunch of glue and stuff like that when it comes to um, dealing with a very intricate piece of cardstock like this piece would be here. If you do decide to use the heat transfer, you're going to need some sort of heat press. So I'm using the Easy Press Mini. You could use the full size heat press as well. Um, I'm also going to be using some Distress Ink as well, just for around the edges here to kind of make it look like there's some smoke on the um, edges of the car to complement the theme that we're doing here. So for the wobbly effect that we see here, this is the point of this car is kind of the wobbly effect. That part is of course optional, but it's really fun to try and it's actually quite easy to make. So all I use for that is some 24 gauge really thin wire. This is white, but it comes in different colors. You could probably find it in a silver or a black or um, even a green if you needed it to be that color. And we're basically going to be creating a little um, spiral of our um, wire and then creating a wobbly card effect with some cardstock and the wire. So I'll walk you through how to do that. As far as adhesives go for this, I am gonna be using hot glue for the, um, the wobbly effect. So with our springs and everything, we're gonna be using the hot glue. Uh, for these additional pieces here, like our hamburger and our sausage and our little flame and all those, I'm going to be using some 3D foam strip tape just to give it a little bit of elevation so it kind of looks like it's 3D and it's sitting on top of the grill. For the other details of our card, I'll be using a liquid glue, so I like the Barely Art Glue brand, and I'll be using that for the details of the card. So there's only one thing I want to note here in Design Space. First, of course, you're going to need to download these templates, which are available, linked below for you as part of the AKC Premium Membership. Now, you'll be able to upload the SVG file right here into Cricut Design Space. If you've never done that before and you're a beginner, make sure you check out a video below where I'll walk you through step by step. Now, when you import the file here, other than setting a scale, if you wish to set a different scale than what is currently what it is currently importing as, um, you would do that first. To scale in Design Space, you would select the entire item, and then you could type in the dimensions up here at the top, or come to any one of these quarters, click, hold, and drag to make the card larger or smaller. Then afterwards, you just need to ungroup the file. Then come in here and select this line that is running across each one of these cards. Come up to operation and change it to score because we want this to score instead of to cut. So then just make sure you have selected that score line. Hold your shift key and select the base of the card as well to ensure that both the score line and the base of the card are selected and attach it using the attach tool at the bottom of the layers panel. This is gonna ensure that when we send this to the cut screen, it's going to score right down the middle of that card as opposed to placing the score line on a separate mat altogether. If the base of your card jumps forward like this, just go up to the arrange tool and click send to back and it will return to its normal location. Don't forget to save your project so that you can come back uh, later if you make more of them and you don't have to repeat this step. Go ahead and click on the make it button at the top and it's gonna sort your project by color. Click continue to connect to your Cricut machine. You can use a full size machine. You could also uh, downsize these so that they fit for the Cricut Joy. You just won't be able to use the scoring um, line for that. You'll just need to take that off and then just fold it by hand. I'm gonna be using a medium cardstock setting for my paper, and then I will be toggling either between the everyday iron-on and the glitter iron-on. 
Make sure when you're working with the heat transfer vinyl, also known as iron-on, that you always mirror. So you may need to click on the edit function to the left-hand side of the screen and toggle the mirror on. That way it is cut out in the opposite direction so that when we place it on, it's facing the correct direction. So what I'm gonna do first here is I'm just gonna start cutting out all of my cardstock layers. If you struggle at all getting your material to stick to your mat, a Cricut brayer tool can be helpful. It's optional, but it can be helpful and kind of press that material to the mat. And then we're gonna go ahead and push this underneath the guides, push it against the rollers, and then we're going to press the double arrow flashing button to load the mat. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have your fine point blade inserted. That is the standard blade that comes with the Cricut machines. So just make sure you're using the fine point blade in clamp B. And then go ahead and press the flash and go button. It might look like a Cricut C icon or a play icon to go ahead and proceed with the cut. Again, I have selected medium cardstock for my material here, uh, but if you're using something slightly heavier, then you can select accordingly in Cricut Design Space. Okay, so the cut is done, and I'm going to unload my mat. Anytime you're peeling cardstock away from your Cricut mat, it's always wise to flip the mat over, and then to peel the cardstock, or excuse me, peel the mat away from the cardstock, because what that does is you're, in essence, curling the mat rather than curling your material. So I like to just gently roll the mat away, just like that, and then we can take our little pieces here and kind of do the same, where we flip, kind of get it to lift a little, we're gonna go ahead and repeat this for all of our cardstock layers, and then in a second, I'll move on to my heat transfer vinyl layer, and we'll cover what to do with that. All right, so if you decide to go with iron-on vinyl for the detail overlay here that says Grill Master, you can use like a silver everyday iron-on, or you can even use something that's kind of got like a brush or metallic or even a slight glitter effect to it. I'm gonna be using this one since I already tested with this one. You can see the result there. So I'm gonna be giving this one a try. When you're working with iron-on material, you always want it to be shiny side down. So we would flip pretty side or shiny side down, and we're cutting in the reverse, and that's why we have to mirror. Again, brayer tool can be helpful to get your material to stick to your mat or get any bubbles out of the material, which could cause tearing. All right, there we go. So again, I already have that loaded up in design space. I've selected glitter iron-on because that's closest to the material I'm working with. But if you're using more of a matte finish, um, or an everyday iron-on, that's the um, setting I would use as an everyday iron-on. So let's go ahead and load this up. All right, so this cut is done. We're gonna go ahead and unload the mat here. And again, I like to flip the mat over and peel the mat away from the material. And then we just need to grab our weeding tool here and we wanna weed the excess vinyl away. Okay, so now we have everything cut out and ready to be assembled. So I'm using this Barely Art Precision Glue. I like it because it um, has a very fine tip to it. It dries clear and it's really easy to use with your details on your paper craft projects. So I'm just laying together, uh, layering together the hamburger, the little sausage, and the flame. All right, there we go. Those things are done right there. And I'm gonna take this piece here, which is gonna be the one that we add the heat transfer vinyl to. I'm gonna go ahead and center that up and add it on. And then we'll glue it to this piece here. So I have a heat safe surface here because I am gonna be using an easy press mini. And all I'm gonna do is, here's my piece of cardstock. Just get it positioned and lined up the way you need it to be, right there in the center of the circle. And my Easy Press Mini is set to medium. If you're using a full press, I would recommend 280 for about uh, 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds. Um, definitely no more than 30 seconds though. So I'm just working in small sections here with my Easy Press Mini. I'm only holding for about a count of five to 10 in each section and I'm kind of just going around a couple of times. It's usually the best way to work with an Easy Press Mini when it doesn't cover the entire surface. All right, so I'm gonna just let this cool and set it aside for a second. While that's cooling, I'm gonna go ahead and take this, which is the base of our card, and it's got a score line down the center here. So I'm just gonna fold this along the score line. Nice and easy. So I'm just laying down a spare piece of cardstock to protect my surface here. I'm gonna grab my Distress Ink here. I'm using that Tim Holtz Distress Ink. This is called Black Soot very fitting. <laughs> and then I'm just using a brush here, a ink blending brush. And I'm just going to go around the edges. So I make small swirling motions like this just to kiss the edges of it. All right, so there we go. We kind of have that distressed smoky look around the edges there. So that's all set. Go ahead and set your ink aside. 
And let's return to taking a look at this. It should be cool by now. Yep, pretty cool. I could touch it. And now we're just gonna gradually peel away that liner. If anything's not sticking for any reason, lay the liner back down and reheat it for another 20 to 30 seconds, let it cool, and then try again. All right, so there is our heat transfer vinyl added to our cardstock. Looks really cool. Slightly different effect from this one, but both look really nice. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and assemble all of these pieces. So for this part here, I'm going to add glue. All right, so there is the grill part, and then there's no exact science to where I put these. I just kind of fit them however I would like, but I do like to place little pieces of foam strip tape underneath them because it elevates them a little bit more and makes them look a little more 3D and complements the overall effect of the card. So I'm just going to cut really small pieces of this 3D foam strip tape and place them on the back. And for this, you can kind of put it right onto the handle area here and it'll work. That's why I like the strips. Usually they can cooperate better with more detailed items. All right, so I like to start with the flame up top, get that centered right there. I'm gonna put the hamburger off to the side here. I'll put the sausage down here. And then I usually like to put these kind of off to the side over here. All right, so the final step of this is to make our wobbly springs. So this is actually a lot easier than you might think. Now they do make some wobbly springs online that you can find on like Amazon that are pre-done. However, I tested them and I got almost no wobble. So <laughs> they kind of defeated the purpose. Um, I decided to go ahead and just make my own because I thought that would also be more practical for a lot of people. So what we're gonna do here, this is our 24 gauge wire and I'm gonna cut it in half. And then I just use my finger to wrap it. Usually I'll get like three to four wraps out of it. And I'll pull it off, kind of squish it together just a little bit there. So we have this little wrapped spring happening here, just like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some paper from the matching color of our base of our card here. So what I'll do is I'll take a pair of scissors and I'll cut, so I'm gonna grab four in total, these little squares we cut. And we're gonna take our hot glue gun at this point. We're gonna add some glue. We're gonna place the base of the spring on it. And then while the glue's still hot, take the other piece, thread it on top, right underneath the spring there. And kind of sandwich your wire between those two pieces of cardstock with the hot glue. That's gonna give us a nice stable base in which to glue this to. So here's a close up at what our springs look like. So we have those wires in between, sandwiched between the two little pieces of cardstock there. So I used four squares for each of the springs. So what I like to do is I'll flip the main decorative piece over here. I'll go ahead and I'll apply my hot glue and I'll just place one on one side and one on the other side just to make sure there's enough support. Give it a second for the hot glue to dry before you go and place it on here. You just wanna make sure everything's good and stable before you do that final step. So now I'm just adding the final bit of hot glue to the top of the springs here. And then flip it over and just center it right on top of the card. So you might want to push it down a little bit while it's drying just to kind of make, have it make good contact. And I like to come in here and make sure I'm pushing it down from the underside. All right, so there we go. We are essentially done now. And you can see we have this cute little like wobble to the front of our card. It adds a little bit of a nice elevation and it really makes it pop. You can get instant access to all of these card designs with the AKC Premium Membership that is linked below for you. And I hope to see you there. Bye for now.